We have a guest in the studio, the Member of Parliament for Molo Constituency. Before we welcome and introduce him, he will hear the day's proverb, City. Yes, uh, the proverbs for the whole of this week are from the country of Mozambique. Mm -hmm. Msumbiji. Okay. Msumbiji. Yeah. Among the many Frelimo, languages Frelimo. spoken... Frelimo. Yes, exactly. Samora, Marshall. <laughs> Msumbiji, that's the name of Mozambique in Kiswahili. Oh, right. Now, given, given the countries that Mozambique neighbors, you will find that the languages are demonstrative of the borders they have. And look, for instance, you'll find communities in Mozambique that speak Shona, which means the border Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is what I found interesting. Mm. There are communities that speak Kiswahili and they're saying Kiswahili. I said, yes, because the border Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so on and so forth. Mm. Slander by the stream will be heard by the frogs. Slander by the stream mm. will be heard by the frogs. Yes. You may think you're alone if you're by a stream. Mm. So you and your co-conspirator are busy nattering away and gossiping about someone mm. and speaking ill of them. Mm. True, other human beings may not be there, mm. but the frogs are there and they can hear you. Okay. Yes. They are of no consequence. That, I think, is the implication. But are they... <laughs> are they really? Yes. Can they repeat what you said? Yes, they can. To, this, to the, other, the other person? In the lingua franca of the frogs, yes. Eh? Braga, braga. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Francis Kuria Kimani, MP, Molo Constituency. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Great to be here. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you. That proverb from Mozambique, when you hear it, mm. what's your interpretation of it? I'm thinking the equivalent of what you have in my community. Like, uh, you should not speak ill of a tree when you're sitting on the roots. Mm. Or you should not speak ill of a snake if you are seated near a stone uh -huh. or a rock. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I think this, 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 this knowledge is synonymous to most of our communities. But most important, sometimes you may not know... Uh, you know this interesting thing when you, you find yourself at an airport yeah. and you're probably speaking Swahili or your vernacular and you wouldn't imagine there is anyone who will hear what you're saying. Mm. Then someone sat in the market like, eh, <laughs> <laughs> This is in London. I shouldn't. <laughs> you know, but and there like you that. are just talking and blubbering away. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mashimo, you're also the chairman of the Finance and National Planning Committee of the National Assembly. Yes, I am. This is a very important committee. For those who may not um, just know the workings of the committee, basically this is the committee that's in charge of thinking about the plans, uh, the economic planning of the country, working hand in hand with the State Department for National Planning, and also looking at finance, and this is how to finance the country's uh, uh, budget and operations. What is the full mandate of the committee? Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I, I think you'll we'll have to do uh, probably a few days if mm. you have to really go through the whole mandate. Mm. Uh, but you put it very well. Uh, the major, major, major function of the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning is to bake the cake for the country. What does baking the cake mean? Uh, budget is, no, uh, Parliament is a budget making house. So uh, the different committees on the National Assembly will uh, come up with a budget according to the state the state departments at the oversight. Mm -hmm. Then the Committee of Budget and National Planning will now uh, correlate uh, all the reports from, from all the committees and come up with a budget. And now the Committee on Finance and National Planning now looks at ways to raise revenue to support that budget. And so uh, mainly, uh, if, if I put it plainly, then ours is mainly uh, looking at ways the revenue raising measures of uh, for the national government. Mm. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we are supposed to watch on that, you know, advice on on the debt ceiling and, mm. and, and what are the options for others. In addition to oversighting uh, various state departments, for example, uh, the Ministry of of Treasury and Economic Planning, uh, the Commission of Revenue Allocation, Kenya Revenue Authority, uh, Central Bank, uh, Financial, you know, all these manas finance, you know, mm. all, the, all those state departments and prostatos that are finance related, then will we'll, we'll not report, like will be the one you know, you in oversight, oversight oversighting their decisions and, and, and their expenditures. 
Uh, and and then of course as i said uh, raising uh, revenue for the uh, for the country but also i- in charge of the uh, economic planning of this country mm. uh, because i think uh, one of the most understated mandates of any government especially treasury has been economic planning uh, what are what macro and microeconomic policies are going to put in place to whether it is to spur development growth or which direction is the country taking mm. in terms of you know um, the macro and microeconomic decisions uh, policies that, that they are going to make uh, what are the economic bl- uh, blueprints um, wh- where do you want to be uh, what should be our targeted gdp growth how do we achieve that how do we make sure that we tackle inflation uh, uh, how do we make sure that the matters of for example f- uh, Uh, for an exchange like the uh, like the strength of the shilling and all of that so so it's a whole um, if you it's a whole it's a whole conversation it's a I would basket say. of uh, things to do yeah we'd also talk about for example one of the other institutions that we oversight is sasra and sasra is a is a, is a body that oversights sacos mm. you know so so um, again we are managed to make sure that uh, whether it is that the members deposits in sacos are well taken care of because sasra is supposed to do their work mm. uh, bank supervision is done through central bank so so you'll find uh, sometimes we will get involved uh, in that uh, we also with uh, involved in the capital uh, we also oversee the capital market authority mm. uh, to make sure that uh, all uh, transactions that are done uh are above board and you know there is no monopoly you know it's a whole the commission of it's a whole it's a, it's a whole conversation we should it's a have lot of things week. it's a lot of things many of the things that of course will directly touch on the monanchi is what you said baking the cake True. baking the cake is looking at the various sources of money that will then finance a the budget key among them being taxation mm-hmm. so you are the people who will determine how we are taxed for a financial year uh yes uh but there's an ongoing conversation it's just it's it's not just the committee on finance and national planning uh but we we are mandated by the constitution and by standing orders of parliament now to to spearhead the process so we're going to find in the next few weeks uh then the national treasury mm. uh, will come up with what we call the finance bill so finance bill is is, is a bill that proposes uh, several revenue uh, uh, raising measures uh, that 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 we should use now to finance the budget and once now that um, bill comes to to our committee the first thing we need to do is do uh, what we call public participation mm. because our constitution is very clear that you cannot make any decisions uh, without involving the public mm. and we have got ourselves into trouble uh, because of not doing that you know there are very many uh, tax laws for example that have been challenged successfully in court uh, because of there not being a public participation Sufficient public participation yeah mm. so so the committee is going now to go around the country you know uh, and then listen to Uh, the various stakeholders uh, all the stakeholders in fact it is all stakeholders because in addition to to the physical city meetings uh, that have to be gazetted we must say that will will be at place x and this is the conversation that we want to have mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, people can still send in their memoranda through through email and they have to be received and they have to fall part of our report and so after now listening to all these people then uh, we're going to retreat and make a decision find out you know uh, you know because the 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 debate on on taxes is that uh, you will say no increase it to 20% no this one will say no we should do it at 15% then that one should say we should do it at 0% then mm-hmm. we'll compare all the merits and the debates of all the conversations that are going to be advanced by different stakeholders mm-hmm. and do a report present it to to now the full the national assembly the, the, the full house and uh, hopefully convince you know the national assembly to pass uh, the bill and then if when it's signed and again uh, uh, it's taken for president for accent and then once the president signs it then it becomes law mm-hmm. how do you go through the process what do you do to go through the process of ensuring that all the stakeholders are informed of the public participation exercises that you wish to conduct and how do you ensure that they understand the same thing that you are coming to listen to them talk about uh you know uh, i think pretty much that's that could also be why i'm here because uh once we start now having this conversation that if you have a view um, that you need us to know about or to hear then there is an avenue for you to come and and, and, and say it uh, uh, but to ask your question more directly is that there must be a gazette notice uh, the sittings uh, of those public participation hearings must uh, be published in the local da- dailies of of national uh, circulation 
and then and I think with seven days notice at least so 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 the 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 venue the venue the subject the, the venue and the agenda of the meeting um, must be advertised in the local dailies you know all the lo in fact it's all the local dailies with national circulation mm. Mm. and then stating the dates uh, and the time and the agenda you know of that meeting and then anybody desires now to come and contribute to that particular particular issue just is, is welcome but most of the time uh, for the sake of planning then would require you to write in advance mm -hmm. so that we're able to allocate and say uh, the media council uh, will will present their their, their issues between uh, 8 and 8.30 and ISPAC, the Institute of Central Republic Accountants would probably do this between this and this mm. and then uh, Uraya Forum will have this, uh, TIFA will have this, you know, all these uh, uh, many stakeholders mm. but I will say because I've, I've, I've served in the Committee of Finance and National Planning for for the last, the, the, the whole life of the tour of Parliament mm. and, and, I, and I saw, you know, including very many young people, like just make a presentation by themselves. You know, yeah. just, just see young, one young Individual man. Individual citizen yes, just coming. Just you know, citizen coming and say, you know, I oppose this or mm. I propose this. And, and we've had uh, some, some, some very brilliant ideas, you know, mm. coming from them. And, and you know, uh, uh, one of the one of the things that I learned uh, was, um, um, for example, about the Lafa Cup. I am a finance student, but um, I think I missed uh, I missed that lesson on the, <laughs> on the Lafa Cup. And basically, what Lafa Cup is, uh, we were able to demystify uh, the the theory that uh, increase in the rate of taxes will lead to increase in tax collection, mm. and that is what the focus has always been. Mm. You want to collect more. So increase the, the rates, mm. you know, increase the rates. The, the tax rate, yes. The tax rate, yes. And and someone came and I said, no, let me tell you something about Lafakav. The more you increase the rate of tax, you're going to collect more until a particular time where you're it's going to plateau. you're going, yeah, going to plateau and you're going out to start collecting less. Mm. And I'm like, perhaps you've achieved that Lafakav for some of our tax brackets. Mm. You know, I, I think there there's some some rates that we should not increase them anymore. In any case, therefore, if we want to collect more, maybe we need to reduce the rate of tax. Mm. And reducing that rate of tax is not going to make us collect less. It's going to make us collect, collect more. more. Mm. So if I may jump in and ask then, just looking at some of the things that you've spoken about and talked about public participation, um, for me, it's really very important. We've seen countries who operate on public participation that because they realize that government works for the people then they are going to take the opinions of the people seriously that they will not spend government money until they essentially get the approval of the people mm. they will not make decisions when it comes to the legislation for government until they get approval from the people i mean there are many countries that do this and we can they're very transparent in their workings so you can actually see how this happens so how serious then does this committee, does this process take on public participation? Because one would assume that during these forums is where you find brilliant suggestions from people about how you can actually get your development curve moving in an upwardly direction when it comes to this whole budget making process, when it comes to taxes and things like this. How seriously is it taken? And I'm serious about that question. How seriously is it taken? Um, I may not speak on behalf of others, but I'm going to speak as a chairperson of Finance and National Planning Committee. Uh, one of the things it did uh, once I was elected as a chairperson mm. was to look at all laws and all tax, especially all tax laws, that the Committee of Finance and National Planning has been taken to court and Parliament has been taken to court because of not doing public participation. Mm. In a Minogro speech, I told, I told my members, guys, we have to change the way we are doing this. Mm -hmm. And this is the impact of it. Because once we saw that, we saw that report, uh, we were able to, to see that there are so many uh, tax proposals uh, or tax laws or particular taxes that we are supposed to collect because they were approved. Yeah. But somebody went to court. You know, uh, the, for example, the Honorable now Senator Okio Mutata, mm. as in, is one of the experts in that field. Mm. You know, he went to court and was able to prove that there was no public participation in the passing of that law. And as a result, courts have nullified those taxes. Let me tell you what that means. And I'm going to, to try and relate that 
to uh, and see how that relates to public debt. Mm. Uh, we first of all pass what's called the budget estimates or the budget. We say that this financial year of 2023, we're going to spend three trillion shillings. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we agree. So once once the budget is approved by parliament, the respective departments draw up their plans, mm -hmm. whether they're procurement plan, whatever, based on the three trillion. Yep. But that three and three that three, that three trillion shillings is based on our ability to to finance it. To finance it, yes. So before now, at the tail end of the process, uh, the trillion has to tell us how do we finance this, mm. and that's why I come in. I say the three trillion shillings will be financed by. Well, we're, we're, we're going to raise two point six trillion. Of, we're going to raise this amount of money through these through taxes tax. and mm. probably borrow, you know, X. Mm. So, if therefore. We passed a particular excise, uh, and therefore the budget was approved based, based on how on much we expected to raise yeah. in that excise. Then that excess duty is nullified by the courts. Mm -hmm. Remember, the budget has already been approved. Yes. So spending has already started, Commenced. and therefore uh, governments have sometimes have no, had now no option mm. than now to, to borrow, borrow, whether uh, internally or externally. Mm. And, and therefore, I was able to, to uh, uh, convince my committee, and we have agreed that actually part of the growing uh, debt mm. is because we are passing these laws haphazardly, you know, mm. in a hurry, forgetting that we have a new constitution. And we have a, um, a very robust judicial system where anybody, and I mean anybody, can actually take that matter to court and challenge it. And if they are able to prove that there is merit, that the, for example there was no public participation, mm. or that it's con because the, the, the two reasons, the two reasons why uh, those uh, those laws were, were nullified by the courts were given two reasons: ninety percent of them, no public participation; the rest ten percent was that they were unconstitutional. Mm. I know they felt they were able to prove that but they, are f they, are, they offended particular uh, uh, aspects of the constitution. Mm. Right. And so that's why I took it upon myself and said, we are not going to be doing this anymore. Because even by the time that law is coming to be passed, uh, there is a lot of money that will be spent, and you put it very well, mm. uh, uh, in the process. Because this public participation forum costs money. Mm -hmm. These publications in the newspapers and all that cost money. You know, when all these people are sitting there listening and doing the report, a lot of money has been used. Mm -hmm. So if then that money has been used and that law it becomes null and void, then we are wasting public funds. So what does it mean then, Mwishima? Because you sat in that committee that was the finance committee of the 12th parliament. Okay. There was some level of public participation from your defense in court. Mm. You know, we publicized this, we put in the newspapers, we held meetings, with this, this, and the other. Mm. The issue was the threshold of public participation. Mm. So now as chairman, mm. what are you setting as a new threshold for public participation? What, what do you define as public participation? Uh, you know, uh, for you to, to introduce any amendment mm. or any clause, that particular clause must have been had in a public participation forum. That was the biggest reason. Mm. Because in the process, uh, we would, for example, say uh, we are taxing uh, this... That minute made juice. Minute made juice, for example. Mm. And that's what we engage the public on public participation. Right. This juice is in a, is in a plastic uh, container. container. Yeah. Uh, and then along the way, we actually realize there is actually another minute made that is not on, on, on plastic containers, that is on glass Con containers. Mm -hmm. So, and again, remember also this public participation is a process. Is yeah. a, we are still in the process of making sure that we fully implement the constitution. Public participation is, is not something that is with us for so long. You know, it's something that we are, we are training ourselves mm. to do that. Mm. <laughs> so, so we will go and say now, in addition to, to the juice in the plastic bottles, we are also going to tax the juice in the glass, glass. Bottles. in the glass bottles so that is the basis of a court to nullify mm. because when we engaged you we did not you talk about the, the, the just the plastic the, the, yeah. the, we just talked about the plastic and, and i'm just i was using that as as as, 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 a, as just an example yeah. basic to mm. show what it is and therefore that understanding that understanding now calls for because uh and a comma a full stop 
uh, a punctuation mark you know sometimes even because even when we're passing this bill uh we may, we will not in the bill there will not be many trees this it will be a code mm. uh, because this in, in KRA this uh, this this particular product has a code mm. it's probably 900.1234.678.9011 yeah <laughs> so if 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 the end digit there is 11 <laughs> and and whatever you pass is a 12 that's it <laughs> so 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 good about we're talking about precision mm. we're talking about being extremely deliberate mm. in doing things right okay and making sure there is no adjustment there is no uh, uh modif- there is no uh, any amendment that has been introduced uh, in the process without having involved the stakeholders and in the event that you that there is a necessity to introduce something that was not part of the discussion yeah. then you must bring that aspect to public participation again again yes mm-hmm. and i think uh, I, i said again i've been able to see this because i sat through i was very active in that committee i sat through all those sittings and then some sometimes i would be surprised you know when the courts now would say that but then when when now reading the judgment and reading the report that was done by my by this by the secretary of my committee mm-hmm. then i was able to see this is why we're doing it wrong mm-hmm. and, and now i think the first thing is to accept why is a mistake and how to rectify, how to rectify it. so that we make sure that no taxpayers money is wasted Mm. in a in a, in a law making process where that law becomes null and void. Mm. Well, we, let's take a break. It's at half past seven, actually 29 minutes to eight. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Eric Latif, Ndu Oko, CT Muga and our guest, the Honorable Kuria Kimani, MP Molo Constituency, Chairman, Finance and National Planning Committee of the National Assembly. Mwishimiwa. Yes, sir. A Kenyan's overtaxed are Kenyans overtaxed uh Kenyans are not overtaxed we just have a few Kenyans paying all the taxes and many more Kenyans that should pay their rightful share of taxes not paying taxes that's what is happening mm. uh, we have those uh, those those are those that should pay mm. are not paying mm. and those that are paying you know end up paying bear, bearing all the burden mm-hmm. okay uh, let me give an example uh, uh, if you get a job at Sara Media Group the first thing you are asked to provide is your KRA pin in addition to the rest yeah and your salary is definitely taxed so yeah. you make 30,000 shillings a month mm. Uh, maybe or in town you know whatever job group that is uh, then you actually get to pay i think it's four five thousand shillings every month and it's deducted at source yeah. by employer it's not whether you choose or not you know it's deducted automatically mm. uh, you find someone who sells uh, who has for example a hardware in river road mm. and they turn around a million shillings every day like the sales alone is mm. one mic. Uh so even if the, uh, the 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 margin is maybe 20% uh, that is 200,000 in 30 days that is 6 million. Mm-hmm. Uh they operate under a business name. And then at, uh, so when they filing that it, uh, or, or even if it's a digital company when they're filing a return they file near in return. return so someone who is making a profit of 6 million shillings every month isn't paying a dime mm. of taxes mm. mm-hmm. someone who is employed at uh standard group earning 30 shillings a month gets to pay their income tax mm. that's what you're saying okay uh, if we had everybody pay their right uh, share of taxes then absolutely we wouldn't have to feel the burden but now the 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 the, uh, the and the attitude of the past and that's why I'm, I'm happy with the the, the statement by the section of the president yesterday that we're not going to do away with us anymore mm. because uh, you owe Kenya Revenue Authority 1 billion shillings and then you go and apply for a waiver and you are waived off uh, half a billion shillings from your taxes but is a person who is paying his VAT on on sugar when they go to buy sugar in, 
in the shop mm. do they get that waiver mm. uh is 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 you and i who are salaried and 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 get um uh, deductions on of on pay on on our, on our on our monthly salary on our allowances on on everything mm. do we get that waiver we don't and so if we stop we seal all these loopholes of uh because the reason why the, the person making 30000 shillings a month here uh, pays their rightful pay of tax is they don't know anybody mm. but <laughs> a big uh, uh, a company or let me say the big boys you know mm. uh, who should pay a billion shillings of tax uh, because they can get appointment with whoever then they actually get to have a waiver so how do we seal those loopholes uh first of all it's a it's a it's a government adjustment it's a it's a it, there must be political goodwill let's start from there mm. and that is a political direction uh that the president is leading us to mm-hmm. that's now going to lead to a, cons- a consequent adjustment of the Kenya revenue authority mm. where you don't just walk in and say guys you know uh, i think i need a waiver here mm. it's like no no waivers you know you have to pay your rightful share of tax and and and, and i think uh, that to me is really going to head us in the right direction uh we're talking about using now intelligent systems uh focusing more on 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 making sure that everyone again everyone pays. let me give an example uh you we have guys who are doing for example contracts with government mm. uh, and when they do that particular service uh especially for supply of services there's a withholding tax that's made that that's withheld from you who did uh, some work with with the county of homabay mm-hmm. uh, now the, the structural uh, uh, um, adjustments or, or or the the framework or the operational adjustment that care is making is to make sure that once you homabay county withholds uh, that tax from you mm then this, the the system reflects that uh, into has been paid 10 million shillings because withholding tax is uh, has been paid 10 million shillings mm. and the withholding tax was, was this much mm. so yeah. you should actually pay this amount of uh, of tax Money. from the end yeah. uh, for those uh, for example contractors uh, um, that do um, or, th- or those that do you know the services of whether it's road constructions and all that uh, there's a concept that we're calling input and output tax uh, so uh, the, the 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 output the amount of tax th- uh, they are paying uh, was uh, would be cancelled off with the amount of tax they paid as an input tax mm. okay uh, but what would they do uh, they would go and gather receipts you know uh, you know I, i never knew why to prove expenditure yeah to prove expenditure you know mm. so, so that <laughs> you and i that, that don't do business with government you probably buy your fuel or whatever and then you have paid a tax on it mm. then there it was a whole business it was a whole business enterprise of, of collecting those receipt receipts collections receipt collections so you, you, someone is going on the dustbin and seeing a receipt ikona vi ai ni ni mia nane ai ni kona mia nane ikona mia tisa iko and then they would actually aggregate those receipts and use them to claim uh input tax mm. as a result because they are actually not in that expense in the first place then they were able to defraud the government of potential you know of of, of numerous uh, revenues mm. and therefore we, this these are now the things that we are taking and as a result by the way uh it it also led to inflation uh, inflation means um, where the cost of things were just ballooning uh, because if you remember a few years ago uh, if you we, we went to property to for example uh, property prices you know you you, you find a, a, an apartment that probably should cost 5 million is selling at 10 yeah. uh, you, you prices really shot up because th- there are people who whether you buy or not there are few people who actually have the 10 million shillings to buy mm. that is not decently earned you know it's you 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 you, you work <laughs> it's easy you work money. very hard you are here every morning b- before six. then you research on the show you here you work hard and then some guys do a lot of nothing and then they they have crazy money you know and as a result they were crowding out you know real business people mm. and actually leading to 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 inflation you know why whether you call them wash wash or or whatever they were called you know they drove they drove the the, the prices very high 
perspective because you know the, the market if, if, if even the, the, they knew the market the, the whatever you put in the market then there will be someone to buy it because they had the money yeah. but you who earns a decent income and who pays your rightful share of tax why not able to, to afford that lifestyle on a photo of the services i have to ask you how knowing all of this information from the things that you're telling us now knowing all of this knowing that only a percentage of those who pay taxes are actually contributing to this kitty number 1 number 2 there's a whole bunch of others who are not paying who are not contributing are you then saying that if everybody was contributing as the in the way in which it is envisioned that everybody would be paying less in what they pay in taxes? Exactly. Number 1. Exactly. Number 2, I don't think people would have an issue with how much they paid in tax if they could see the fruits of their labor. A lot of the things that we often hear about let's, let's look at the let's look at the public system because that is government. Right? Not the individuals who have opened up things in the private sector to make things work in government. And look across board. Health, infrastructure, education, agriculture, the things that we've been harping on about for the last however many years. Look at a situation today when 23 counties are affected by drought. Things that essentially, that happen in other countries. Again, I'm sorry, but I have to go back mm. to other countries. That happen because now when you say the public coffers are then going to be able to take care of that. And these public coffers are often made up by the taxes that their people pay. The problem is that we complain about being overtaxed is that unfortunately sometimes you cannot see, not sometimes, most times, you cannot see the result of this tax number one are there other ways that the operations of government can be funded aside of tax and is that some of the stuff that this committee that you chair mm. would be able to look into because when we talk about a budget and how it is going to then be financed the majority of the finance comes from taxes in terms of creativity in terms of thinking about other things that can be done to fund government those, do those things land at the desk of the committee? Mm. You know, um, thank you very much. You know, I, I'm picking your mind, um, and you, you're speaking the view of many Kenyans. Most people want to pay their rightful share of taxes, but they really want to see where the government or where that money is going value to. Value for money. Mm. And value for money. Mm. And if you look, the focus, the focus on this Kenya Kwanza government has been mainly on this service delivery. Mm. Uh, we are going to find, because... Uh, and, and, and the way we are going to, to deliver that, to have that service delivered, is when we have a hard-working government. A hard-working government. It's a way, I, I use that example earlier, it's the way you guys turn up here early in the morning, every day. Mm. That's what we want, the hard work from government. Mm. And uh, I think there is no room for, for laxity in this government. Mm. You know, uh, we, uh, we were in a retreat uh, in... Uh, with with all this government the other day, and you could see the the, the vibrance and, and and the attention to detail that the president was doing and was holding everyone to account for. And if that continues, and I'm sure it's going to continue, then those issues that you're talking about, you're going to find a, a, a very big change, you know, from them. First of the decision, one of the decisions that the president made uh, was the cutting down the budget by three hundred billion, and saying. We are not going to spend money on things that we shouldn't be spending on. Mm. As a result, by us saving the 300 billion shillings, that money has been redirected to uh, other functions that have a direct impact on Wanjiko. Uh, whether you're talking about the Hustlers Fund, uh, you know, whether you're talking about the, the recruitment of 30,000 teachers. You know. So let me tell you, for example, the creativity that you're talking about. And yeah. this, even in terms of what are the priorities of government in their spending. Just by employing the 30,000 teachers, the multiplier effect of that is we are actually going to increase the amount of tax we are collecting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to have 30,000 30, other people paying pay as you are. Paying pay. Uh, the 30,000, again, it has a multiplier effect because you know, those people will be deployed from across the country. They're going to, to rent your apartment uh, in, 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 in El Bagon. Mm. Uh, they're, they're, they're going to buy their food from, they're going to pay their debts and, and all that. And, and the multiplier effect of the 30,000 teachers is actually going to be felt. Uh, if we increase again the recruitment of our police officers, again we also uh, are dealing with uh, with another uh, problem of unemployment. Uh, outside that, uh, you asked whether there are any creative ways apart from raising of of increasing taxes. Mm. 
th the, this government is now very keen on public private partnerships ppps and you're saying if we have a private sector mm. investor who wants to come and invest in a public good or public service as long as there's appropriate measures then we are going to have the public uh, gaining from that particular mm. service and we don't have to borrow mm. for that project and we we do not have to increase taxes for it and it's going to also lead to spy economic growth then why is it i'm sorry but i have a book i'm sorry to inter to to interrupt but i think i have to stop on that train of thought that as we sit here in this room these are things that are coming from you um and we, we have nobody to look to, Kenyans have nobody to look to, but for those who are making the laws about how they are going to operate in life. So these are ideas that are coming from you. The thing is that Kenyans want to see these things come to life. How will they actually come to life? The, we, we talk about all the time about how the ideas are there. We know what ought to be done, but then not doing them seems to be a problem. In the good book will even call it a sin. That you know what should be done, it is not done, then you're doing something wrong. You know, why why can't we actually see these things happening? You know, this government is, is only been a hundred days in office. Mm. And you're going to be seeing these changes. I'll give you one example. Um the the Rironi Mausami trot. Mm. You know it was supposed to be duo. You know, you remember over Christmas we had people literally sleeping on the at Gilgil and yeah. at yes. at, all, at all the station. Yeah. So there, there was a proposal. It, it was it was it's, it's, it's really advanced in terms of uh, dueling that highway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect to even go pass through my constituency all the way to a place called Mount Summit. Mm -hmm. That road will open up. You know, uh, South Rift as in big, as in big, 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 big way. Uh, it was through a PPP uh, partnership. Mm -hmm. But once this government started looking at the details of what was on the PPP, mm -hmm. then it was actually a rip-off. Right. Because it was it was to be done at more than double you know, the, the cost of which it's going to be done. And there was no proper mechanism to know at what point should the road revert back to the people. Mm. Because, because, like, for example, once we resume from recess, uh, we are going to start an inquiry on to the revenues that are raised mm -hmm. by this Nairobi Expressway. Mm. Everyone agrees. Perfect idea. You know, you 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 want to get to to wherever you're going faster. Are you willing to pay an extra uh, cost for it? Mm. If you the, if you if you are, then there's an option. Yep. Use expressway. Sure. And as a result, when you use expressway, you actually reduce traffic. On, on yeah. Mombasa Road. As a result, now Mombasa Road has really expanded. If you go to somewhere like Kitangela now, you know, it used to take a lot of time here and prolong all that. And, and, and you're, you're finding now business and, and settlements and everything growing up on this on this particular so you'll area. Do an However, into as we realized, mm. because the essence of this, the PPP on, for example, the Nairobi Expre was supposed to be, uh, you are building this road at, I'm just saying for conversion's sake. A 10 billion mm -hmm. for conversion's sake okay, okay. Uh, so you build it at 10 billion and then you're supposed to recoup your cost from the, the collections you get mm. by users of these roads yep. okay over what period of time so so, so, so those are the questions that uh, 27 years yes yeah. yeah, so are the question but you see it shouldn't even be the number the question of the 27 years should be how much have you collected yeah so any of you, until you collect, until you, have, you collect this amount plus your interest of this much. But yes. how do you verify how much they collect? Because yeah. they're the ones collecting it, especially when the mode of payment is cash, cash. only. So, so, so there's no audit trail. So when so, we so say so, this, so can, when can we just say this, then Mushima, okay, there is a PPP for the expressway. It's completed. There was uh, we were at a very advanced stage of getting the Rironi Mau Summit uh, contract done, which parliamentary committee was responsible for oversighting those and making sure that before anything is actually inked you have the uh, approval of parliament for the roads that would be transport okay uh, that, that, that would be the transport committee so then the questions are asked what happened in the 12th parliament you know what happened <laughs> because all these things we talk about happened in the 12th, 12th, 12th parliament. parliament the 12th parliament was full of intimidation it was full of political blackmail that uh, you made a decision, you made a statement that was unpopular with the government, and the next time the taxman was on your door. 
and the next time there was a case by DPP are we saying that we with this government we will see nothing of that sort the 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 promise that you've got and, and I really want to hold the president accountable for it and I'm sure he will keep it mm. is that he is going to allow everyone to have divergent views mm -hmm. and as and, and and allow them you know and for, for example uh, if, if I diverge a little this statement will be a little political but Okay. Uh, You're a politician, <laughs> and this is the station room anyway. Mm. I mean, mm. So the the uh, the visit by His Excellency the President to to, to Nyanza, mm. to Homa Bay, and to all that, you know. And I saw the dalliance uh, of you know my predecessor uh, on the Gladys Wanga and all these other leaders from from, from Nyanza, and I saw the committee is going to welcome the president, and the discussion was about how economic plans for that region. They didn't have to join government. They didn't have to take up leadership positions. Mm. And it has been clear. I want you as opposition to carry out your oversight role without fear. Because I want my government to be put to account. And you, for you even to get development in your areas, you don't need to, to join government. Tell us when you're doing it wrong. As members of parliament, even for me as a member of parliament in Kenya, Kwanzaa, in UDA, we have, he has expressly told us in our meetings, if you find that any of my ministers, any of my PSs, or anyone is doing things wrongly, the supporting government does not mean, you know, keeping your mouth shut. Mm. It means telling us how and what is going wrong. And every, every, okay, every uh, now, uh, for the three months, we have actually had three PGs, mm. three parliamentary group meetings, and one, uh, and one leadership meeting. And in those parliamentary group meetings, you know, they're like conversations, fine. So are there matters that you think, you know, are not going well? And there is that leeway, there's that freedom to say, I, I think that, that this direction is wrong. I think that statement, I think, and then we have a conversation about that and we find a solution. And to peg this, my question to what you've just said, we have people who don't pay taxes. Mm. There are those who have no choice but to pay. Care are the ones who collect taxes. So, if there's this problem, what is KRA's involvement and what has KRA done to ensure, because there's no other agency in the country that collects taxes, it's them. What do they do to make sure that these people who don't pay actually pay? And what does the, the committee that you had do to ensure, because the loophole has been cited, it is clear. Mm. What's the solution? That is where my role has been cut. And for the last, what do you did in the last two months? Because I've only been chair for two months. Uh, for the two months we've done, um, part of it was the approval of the uh, of the or the PS, you know, the PS Treasury, PS Economic Affairs, the approval of commissioners for revenue allocation. Uh, then we broke on recess. Uh, we break. We come back from recess next week. We have a whole week in action, you know, of different experts in all fields, trying to make sure that we they equip us with the re with the relevant skills for this job. And then after that, we, we start with the finance field. So I think perhaps in the next, uh, when you have this quarter conversation, then I'll be able to say the progress that you've made. Mm. Yeah. Well, Mushimo, we thank you very much for joining us. And I know you, yeah, there's there's a lot still to talk about. And especially when you come back now into the recess, uh, from the recess, um, and you begin looking at the finance committee, we want you to come and we talk about it. Mm your closing remarks for today. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, mine is to really thank you uh, for the candid conversations that we have, you know, touching on every every subject. And you keep us informed. You keep us on check. You ask us the tough questions. And we have been given the manager by the people. It is our responsibility to make sure that we answer to your questions to our satisfactory. And even uh, when we don't know the answer, then uh, mm. to go and, and plan about it. I've picked a few things that, that, that you've said, mm. and, and, and I'm going to, you know, every time, I'm going to call myself for a meeting, for example. Are we doing public participation? Are we doing public participation for the sake of it? Mm. Or are we listening to what the people are saying? How do we make sure we stop overburdening people in taxes? Uh, how do we make sure that everybody pays the rightful share of tax? How do we make sure we finance the budget mm. outside? Taxes. The normal taxes and 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 and, and borrowing. So I really want to thank you uh, for this show, and you can be sure that where I sit, I'll do my best to get the job done. We will hold you accountable for that. Thank you. That's the purpose of this show. And welcome you. again. Thank you. The Honorable Francis Kuria Kimani is the chairman of the Finance and National Planning Committee of the National Assembly. He represents the good people of Molo constituency in the National Assembly.
Uh, and perhaps you do a shout out yes, yes. in 2 seconds <laughs> this is to really thank all the people of molo this is the first time ever for the last 30 years that mm. molo has reelected a member of parliament <laughs> and for the people of molo i mean eternally grateful <laughs> and i'm going to let you down i'm not going to let you down i'm going to get the job done thank Very you well.